So I'm just going to read down this list and you can tell me when you want to jump in. Okay. All right. Best actor, Stellan Murphy for Oppenheimer. Okay. Best actress. Oh, I'm going too fast. What did you say? I just said nice. You can keep going. Oh. Emma Stone, best actress for Poor Things. Has anyone seen Poor Things? <laughs> because I have No not. one here has. How about over there? <laughs> has anyone seen Poor Things? <laughs> no? It's just I've me over here. Poor I things. haven't seen it. I hate when yeah. these movies get nominated and I didn't see them. <laughs> it frustrates me because I'm like, are you sure? Right. Did they make but the right decision? <laughs> now I feel like I got to watch four things. Yeah, it's on streaming now. Of course, they put it on streaming like the day the Oscars come on. So I'm going to oh, watch okay. it. But... Yeah, I might have to find it and check it out. I got to watch that after I watch Bad Boys 3. Oh, I forgot all about Bad Boys 3, yeah. Which is not. How could I forget? Nominated, but... No, it was not. No, it, it was not, will, thankfully. It will cause controversy nonetheless. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Best picture. Oppenheimer. Okay. That's to be expected. Not mad at Be that. honest. I thought I thought Oppenheimer was gonna get screwed over. By but a, it looks by like a, looks like they didn't. By it a, looks who, like by what film? By the Oscars. Oh, but I mean what who did you think what film did you think was gonna win? Oh, that I didn't know, but I didn't think... I mean, I knew Robert Downey Jr. and Cillian Murphy were probably going to win, which I said here, but I didn't think they were going to get all the other stuff, too. I said they ain't going to give them a, a suite of all of these things, and I, I'm happy I was wrong, to be honest. I think no one else sweeps like that, meaning in, in this... I didn't anticipate anyone else sweeping like that, is what I'm trying to say. Well... Four Things was nominated for a lot of stuff. So was Killers of the Flower Moon. There was a lot of different um, categories where they were competing against other people who were, you know, uh, industry and award darlings as well. So I thought they were going to at least jerk them on a few. But uh, the, the spoiler version is Oppenheimer cleaned house. It's all the awards. It was like, we'll take this award and this award and this award. Watch your step. That's my award. Watch it. Right. They took all of them. But back to the list. Best picture was Oppenheimer. Best supporting actor, Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. Best supporting actress, Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers. Again, yeah, super fly. And she did a great job in the film. She did. And I just, I love this for her. I love, I love the fact that she... She's talked about, you know, she's kind of had a hard time in the industry and all of that. And, you know, she doesn't fit the typical description of Hollywood actress. No, um, she's, a, she's and, a big, fat black lady. There you go. So. <laughs> um, but listen, that's that's what makes it fly. Of course. I'm not I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just I'm just saying. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. She's yeah, she doesn't herself. look like Emma Stone or, you know. No. Uh, and, and when you were talking about Oppenheimer, I was thinking to myself, well, the way I kind of see it is, you know, the. I mean, you know, you're going to say race wars, but I feel like the white men get theirs first and then white women get theirs. And then if there's any left over, usually. So that's why to me, Oppenheimer was obvious. I do understand, like, when you're talking about things like Killers of the Flower Moon. I just feel like people didn't really care for Killers of of the Flower Moon as much as they, as as Oppenheimer seems to re have resonated with so many people. Um, and it was such a huge, huge release that, but yeah, so that's why, that, that, that's, first of all, that's one of the reasons why I said I thought that Oppenheimer would sweep. But also, just thinking about uh, Divine and the landscape that she's existing in, it's, it ain't easy. No, no, not at all. And that's why I purposely pointed out those characteristics, because she's not a blonde-haired white woman with blue eyes who is a Hollywood darling. She's this random lady who most people never even heard of until holdovers. And it's like, who's this big, fat black lady? A great actress. That's who she is. Right. She and, I, 
and I encourage people to go and find other other work that she's done right. um, because this isn't the only thing she's done. Right. Um, but this did make her very recognizable. So I do encourage Which people to go and, and seek out. I, I love it when I find, it, find an actor that I like and I'll just go and Google their filmography uh, and I'll be like, I'm going to watch some Sterling K. Brown movies today. Right. <laughs> Because he's done so, he's one that I looked up recently because he's done so much and I haven't seen most of it. So, right. um, but yeah, so I encourage, I encourage our, our audience to please go and seek that out. And yeah. Be pleased. Agreed. Best director. I mean, you already know. I mean, he didn't need the award. Nolan. But, but you know, I keep telling y'all, that's, that's the <laughs> that, guy. That's the show the bell. That's that's, that's the guy. You know what I'm saying? Knowledge. That's the guy. You know what I'm saying? So all the shoulder yeah, movements. We know that's your you know guy. Saying? Christopher Nolan. Yeah, that's my guy. Best director, Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer. Uh-huh. Um, so then we have Best Original Song. Mm -hmm. Billie Eilish and Phineas won for What Was I Made For? The song that you, you know. Yep. Um, I'm going to skip some of these because we don't care about them. Or you want me to read everything? You can use your discretion. Skip what you want to skip. All right, well, I'm going to speak about one that I, I was shocked by, which is Best Animated Movie. Um, It did not go to Spider-Man, into the Spider-Verse. It went to The Boy and the Heron. Oh, I heard about this. Cause you, cause that you, was interesting. Because my cousin was upset. Is that the actor? Shamika. Is that a joke? Yep, a joke. Um, he was upset, very upset, very, very publicly upset. Yep, we'll get to it. Best original score went to Oppenheimer. I thought that was really interesting. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't remember what were the other ones were that were nominated, but Oppenheimer didn't have the flyest score in my opinion. And a lot of it was similar to other Christopher Nolan movies. Like, if you've seen Inception, it was a very similar score. So that was interesting to me. But For the people who haven't seen every single Christopher Nolan movie, maybe they thought it was different. Maybe, but shame on them for that. But, yeah, uh, Oppenheimer also won Nerd. Best Original... Oh, yeah, I'm just, listen, I've seen every Christopher Nolan movie. You're just messing with you. <laughs> and most of them I've seen more than once. Because, because not very many people would know the, the, the score or be able to recognize Christopher Nolan's uh, uh, usual caliber of score. So that's oh, why I well, think that. You know, Which some, of us cool. are, some of us are big Nolan fans, you know? Oh, yep. What else? What else? What else? Anatomy of a Fall won Best Original Screenplay. And I always think that should be highlighted because most movies are adaptations of a book or yeah. something like that. And anytime somebody comes up with an original thing, I think we should highlight it. And so maybe people don't care about that. As a creative, I do. And I think that should always be highlighted. Yeah. Too many people are not creating things on their own. They're kind of remixing old movies or taking books and making them into a film. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I think we should highlight the original creators yeah, more so because they have to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, best Cinematography, Oppenheimer. Uh, so this is, this is the really nerd side, what I'm going to say next. You don't care about this at all, but I got I to gotta get my nerd shit off. Best Visual Effects. Say. Went to Godzilla minus one. And that is super fly. I almost wore my Godzilla shirt today to celebrate. But, oh, I didn't uh, yeah. Um, so Godzilla minus one is a really good international film. Um, it broke records for box office numbers. And they did an amazing job. Uh, I saw it. And I'm thinking about going to see it again, actually. They even released it in black and white, which is rare and weird. And I'm like, oh, that's so weird. I might just do that. Yeah. That sounds cool. Yeah, what's cool about Godzilla Minus One is it is a 2023, because it came out late last year, if I'm correct, uh, 2023 version of like the old school Godzilla movies, where like it's not Godzilla against all the super fly monsters with the super fly visual effects. It's Godzilla against like 
the people and they're trying to figure out how to defeat Godzilla. And it's it's like Godzilla damaging, you know, everything he touches. And, you know, it's that kind of old school, like, Japan versus Godzilla kind of story. Okay. Um, and that was really cool to see in 2024. For example, my daughter has seen all of the recent Godzilla movies. And I took her to see this Godzilla movie. She was enamored. She was glued to the edge of her seat because this was so new and different for her. Where yeah. I was like, oh, this is the classic old school joint. Like, this is just a new version. And so everything that happened was fly, but it was not new to me. It was just a new, it was like a refreshing take on the classics. Okay. And to her, she was like, dad, this is, this is like the best Godzilla movie ever. And I told her, and this is why another reason I think is fly is, if you have never seen any of the old classic joints, then this is a great introduction to that style of film. Really? Oh, okay. I dig that. Yeah. I, I, I kind of want to see it simply because if it won for visual effects, I'm curious about the visual effects. Yeah, they did a great job. Uh, and, you know, I know most people probably don't care about that. Uh, but because of the type of movie this was, I thought it was worth highlighting. So speaking of adaptations, um, American Fiction, a movie we both saw and were hoping won uh, an award, did. Cord it won. What? Cord won, right? Cord? Okay, just go ahead. Go oh, ahead. Cord Jefferson. I was like, what are you talking about? Yes, very good. I was lost. I was a blonde moment on my part. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. And we're still stuck on the visual effects. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, American Fiction won for Best Adapted Screenplay. Um, and I think that's really cool. I'm glad it won, even though it lost to some behemoths in the industry, mainly Oppenheimer. Um, but I'm very glad that it won uh, an award and is recognized. Um, and he said something interesting, too, which we'll get to later. Okay. Or Jefferson Cord many won. Cord Jefferson, not Jefferson Cord. You're right. Um, Four things won best costume design. Uh, you want to pull best over for a second about that? What'd you say? You want to pull over for a second about best uh, costume design? No, let's do it after. So we could talk about all the fun stuff after we've read the winners. Okay. But yes, we will speak about that for sure. Four things also won best production design and best hair, best makeup and hairstyling. Oppenheimer won Best Film Editing. I think that's a weird category. Because how do you compare people's film editing? Have you ever seen anything on Tubi? Or have you ever seen those clips where people post Tubi? Um, and how, but they, how, but, but I, no, no, no. That's I a great what you're point. Gonna say. You're being these sarcastic. People are the cream of the crop. These movies, <laughs> these films are the cream of the crop. But that doesn't mean that there isn't skill in editing well no no you're right that's a great point i don't disagree with that the reason i say it's weird is because there's already a best cinema cinematography award mm-hmm. so it's kind of weird that they're separate to me maybe people feel otherwise feel free to put it in the comments but to me it's weird that you have best cinematography and also best editing i think that's weird i get that but i feel like cinematography probably involves it's when they think about that category, it probably involves more than the editing. I guess, yeah. Because it's kind of like, I feel like cinematography kind of combines a bunch of those things, right? Like visual effects would be com- yeah. combined in there, editing. Um, yeah, so, you know, directing, all of that kind of gets rolled into... Mashed up into one? Yeah. That's what I would Who wants to talk? All right.